Welcome to our webinar entitled Yom Kippur and the Feast of Tabernacles, Part 2. Let's go to the Father in prayer. Father, we thank you. We just give you glory, honor, and praise. And Father, we just invite you into this webinar. I ask you to speak through me. I humble myself before you. And just send forth the uh, angels to go forth and prepare the way for the word and the Holy Spirit to touch people's hearts as they listen to this message. And we also send forth the angels too, to, um, well, I said that, but I also wanted to invite Jesus in. So we invite Jesus as well to join us and all of heaven and much more angels. But anyway, I just thank you, Father. I just give you the glory, honor, and praise. And we put the blood of Jesus over this and destroy every plan of the devil. We have focused on part one in the last webinar of Yom Kippur and the Feast of Tabernacles. We talked about Yom Kippur and we began to discuss the Feast of Tabernacles. We will conclude in part two with the Feast of Tabernacles. This will be a conclusion of the series of discussions that we have had in the last couple weeks on the fall feasts, as mentioned in Leviticus 23. These fall feasts include Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles is also referred to as the Feast of Booths, and you can find that in uh, Leviticus 23, 33 to 34, and, and I'm using the Amplified Version of the Bible. It is a reminder to the Jewish people when they didn't have a roof of their heads in the wilderness, when they were coming through the wilderness, they lived in booths or sukkotes, which is uh, Hebrew for booths, where there were three sides to it and a roof. One can see the sky through the leaves of trees placed there. This feast is celebrated to remind the Jewish people of what the Lord had done for them. At the time of the taping of this webinar, the Feast of Booths is still being celebrated. It's celebrated for seven days, and it will be ending in a couple days. It, and that's being celebrated at the time of, right now, the, tape, the taping of this webinar. We briefly talked about the seven feasts mentioned in Leviticus 23. Four of them have been completed by Jesus through his first coming. Those are Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and the Feast of Weeks. The, th the last three feasts are Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the Feast of Tabernacles. These will be completed when Jesus returns in his second coming. Some see these seven feasts as God's redemptive plan for the whole world, a foreshadowing of a Jewish Messiah and a Savior. For the peoples of all nations. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus gave meaning to the first feast of Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. And remember in our last webinar, I had not really researched that, but in preparing for this, I found, um, the, and I'm going to go into explanation what those are. Um, the um, those first feasts were taken care of by Jesus at Passover when he when he had he had died at the cross, unleavened bread when he was placed in the tomb, and the first fruits when he rose again. So the fir these three uh, feasts plus the feast of weeks, which is four spring feasts have been completed already by Jesus. So, so you have to understand that it's not just a Jewish uh, feast. It's, it's also Christian because Jesus is our Savior and he completed what had, was started in these feasts in Leviticus 23. So um, you do celebrate it in some form but I would take more note of it as time goes on and really get involved in understanding it more because it applies to you. Jesus, our Savior, had completed this. 
So the first feast of Passover, which was his death, unleavened bread was his burial, and the first fruits was his resurrection. The Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost, coming at the beginning of summer, is remembered by Christians as the birthday and first fruit harvest of an international church of the Messiah. The last three feasts in the fall, seen by the Christians and Jews, uh, are seen by the Christians and Jews as a foreshadowing of a future age with a Jerusalem based global kingdom of universal provision and protection by the Feast of Tabernacles. So we have to just, we have to look at these three feasts that have not been completed and they will be completed. And that is uh, once again, going to be completed by Jesus in his second coming. So don't think that these are not for Christians they are for Jews and Christians to participate in. Um, in Zechariah 14, it talks about um, the Feast of Tabernacles in length and the very last Feast of Tabernacles that will be so celebrated. So I want you to follow along with this. It's in Zechariah 14, verses 1 to 15. This passage describes how the Father... It starts out in Zechariah 14 where it says, The Father will gather all nations against Israel and against Jerusalem to battle. And I'm paraphrasing. I'm not saying it exactly, but I'm paraphrasing the first um, few verses. He describes different things that will happen where he will fight against those nations. In verse 4, it states that he shall stand on the Mount of Olives, Olives when he returns. The, uh, the greatest of those, that verse, the rest of those verses, 4 to 8, state where new things will happen. So in verse 4 of Zechariah 14, when he returns, he is going to stand on Mount Olives. Where the world began is where it's going to end. But it's not going to completely end because there's going to be a new world, new heaven, new earth, and a new Jerusalem. And you can read that in Re Revelation 21. Verse 9 says, The Lord shall be king over all the earth in that time when he comes. In that day, the Lord shall be the only one worshipped and his name the only one. Verses uh, 10 to 15 relay some more details of what will happen. Verse 16 says, Then everyone who is left of all the nations, now remember, the, the, the nations are going to go to battle, and who's ever left over that, that went up against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king the Lord of hosts, and celebrate the Feast of Booths. So when that happens, and who's ever left of the nations that were going to battle, they that, that went to battle against Jerusalem, those that were left will go up from year to year at the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths. For verses 17 and 19 describes that those who do not go up is important. Those that do not go up to worship the king, the God of hosts, there will be no rain on them. And rain is very important in Israel. Verse 18 says, It is stated as a plague which the Lord will strike the nations who do not go up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles at that time. Verse 21 describes how everything will be holy to the Lord, even the people, whether they are Jew or Gentile. In, in referencing this, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but this is just a reference in Isaiah 2, verses 2 to 3. It talks about the mountain of the Lord, and the, all the nations will go to it. These fall feasts will be completed by the second coming of Jesus, and the Feast of Tabernacles, or Booths, will be celebrated with the Lord tabernacling with us. He will come and, and be with us. 
That is the whole thing. He always, he started in Genesis and he, he had fellowship with Adam and Eve and that got broken up by sin. And all down the ages, in the end, he's going to have a people as he purposed in Genesis before sin came on the scene. The Father has always desired a people to fellowship with. The relationship with Adam and Eve was destroyed by sin. What really touched me in researching these feasts in that, that in the end, he will have that people that he planned at the last Feast of Tabernacles. Every year in Israel, Feast of Tabernacles is uh, celebrated. But there's going to be a Feast of Tabernacles where Jesus will return and God will tabernacle with his people. Uh, referencing um, also, too, is uh, just a reference from, in Revelations 21.3. It says, And then I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the tabernacle of God is among men and he will live among them and he they will be his people and god himself will be with them as their god and that's going to happen in the very last feast of tabernacle so whether you're jewish or gentile you are you are included in this so it uh it really um, behooves you to look into this because this is coming and these fall feasts are preparing you for his coming because he's going to come in the fall. Um, so you see how these feasts are appointed for Jew and Gentile. He wants all peoples, all nations to be in that tabernacle with he wants a tabernacle with all nations, Jew, Gentile, and nations of the world. Well, we're going to close now with this series on um, the fall feasts. And I um, just want to lead you in a salvation prayer. If, if, you, um, if you have never asked Jesus or Yeshua in your heart, and you've been following along and you say, you know, I don't know if I really have asked Jesus or Yeshua as to be my Messiah or my Savior. Now is your chance. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Say this prayer after me. Father, I believe that Jesus, Yeshua, died on a cross for me and rose from the dead. I repent of my sins and ask him to be my Lord and my Messiah, my Savior. And I ask him to be Lord of my life. And I surrender myself totally and completely to him. I ask you to come into my heart, Yeshua, Jesus, and rule and reign in my heart and show me your way so that I can may live the way you desire me to live. And I thank you, Lord. Now, if you've never heard about the baptism of fire and Holy Spirit and fire, I'd like to lead you in that. And that gives you a uh, strengthening of your relationship with the Lord and also the gifts of the Spirit. And, um, and you can find that in Acts 1 and 2 and 1 Corinthians 12. Just say, Father... I heard of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with fire and with the gifts of the Spirit, as mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12, and I ask you to fill me to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. And he will. He's a loving Father, and he's waiting. has been waiting for this time to embrace you and show you how much he loves you. So, well, we're going to go. And we're going to shift gears the next time, um, have some different topics on my heart. I don't know which way the Lord's going to go, but we have ended our um, talk on the um, feast, the fall feast. But please look them up and get more um, knowledgeable about them. 
So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for joining us. I thank you, Lord, for you and Jesus and the angels and all of heaven and the Holy Spirit joining us today. And um, I just put the blood of Jesus over these this webinar and over the seeds that have been sown in people's hearts. And may that may it produce much fruit for you and the kingdom. And I thank you, Father. I just give you the glory, honor, and praise, and I destroy every plan of the enemy over these people's lives. Well, God bless you, and I will see you the next time.